Now, firms across the country are waiting to learn when they will be able, able to reopen. For many struggling with their bottom line, the end of lockdown can't come soon enough. But business owners say the government's approach must offer them stability without the threat of another shutdown in the future. We can speak now to Gemma Tetlow, who's the chief economist at the Think Tank Institute for Government. And uh, Gemma, th th this, this is risky. We're entering a period that obviously is, is going to be different for different aspects of the economy. Is there an acceptance that some businesses, frankly, are just going to have to wait and see? This is obviously the third time that the government's tried to bring England out of lockdown. And really, this time around, they need to try and avoid some of the mistakes that were made last time. And partly that uh, should be about being clear what their objectives are and what metrics they will be looking for to guide their approach to easing some of the restrictions that are currently in place. And hopefully for businesses around the country, that will give them a much clearer steer of what they need to be looking out for to understand when they are going to be able to go back to something more like normality. Um, that, that means the government probably needs to steer clear of being very precise about on this date we are going to be able to open XYZ businesses, but give more of a clear steer about which numbers are they going to be looking at? What do we need to see in terms of whether it's case numbers or hospitalizations or death rates or progress of the vaccination program to guide that easing of the lockdown? So, well, um, Doctor, if you were advising the Prime Minister, what advice would you give? So two things I think are going to be important. One is to make sure that the whole of the cabinet is brought into the roadmap that's laid out today. And so that means that all parts of government policy are pulling in the same direction and that the same considerations are guiding that. So in particular for businesses and households across the country, one thing that will be important to see is that policies from the Treasury, and this will include the Chancellor's budget announcements next week, are consistent with the rest of government's approach to easing the lockdown. So leaving in place the sort of support programmes like the furlough scheme and the business loan schemes whilst social restrictions remain in place, and then moving on to different sets of policies once those restrictions can start to be eased, for example. So the hope is that the government learns from its mistakes, but which particular mistakes are you, are you most, um, I'm not going to say bitter, but uh, which are the ones you really don't want them to repeat this time? Um, so for example, at the end of last summer, when the Treasury and the government first tried to launch the economy back to something like normal, normality, the Treasury adopted the Eat Out to Help Out scheme, which encouraged people to go out, go into restaurants, eat meals together. And actually, with the benefit of hindsight, and to be honest, even the epidemiological evidence at the time suggested that was a risky move. Uh, those indoor social activities are exactly the ones that are most likely to risk increasing the transmission of the disease. So making sure the government's approach this time is more coherent in terms of understanding and communicating to the public which activities are more risky in terms of the disease transmission and therefore why the government is encouraging them or telling them they can or can't do certain activities at different times. The, the, the fear uh, appears to be particularly about any new variant, uh, hence the need, despite this very successful vaccination program, to just try and keep the infections at the level they are, if not lower. I think that's one thing that it would be good to see the Prime Minister being very clear about today, is it's clear that the government's objectives have somewhat shifted from where we were last May when they first published a strategy for easing lockdown. And in particular, the rise of new variants seems to be a factor in that. So, Prime Minister, to spell out really what is the risk that they perceive from these new variants and how does that translate into their caution in easing the restrictions at the moment? The, the irony, of course, is whilst all the, 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 the focus is on data, People really do want a sense of date. I can understand why the public want that sense of dates. Um, the difficulty is that, as your, your previous guest said, the government can't stick to a rigid timetable simply because there are 
too many unknowns that remain about the risk of the disease, the risk of new variants, the effectiveness of the vaccine programme. And therefore, I think the government needs to find a better way of explaining to the public what information they have, how they're judging the risks on the basis of that, what their objectives are, and therefore how new information, new data is going to guide their approach. It's not quite as much certainty as saying you will be able to do these activities on this particular date in the future, but hopefully that will give people a stronger sense of what is going to guide the government's approach and what they need to look out for to start getting an idea of when things are going to change for them. Dr. Gemma Tetlow, really good to talk to you. Thank you very much for your time.